The hidden reason you can't lose belly fat. The scary truth about insulin resistance. You probably already have it, like I did, and it's quietly wrecking your health, wrecking your body in the background while you're distracted worrying about whether that gluten-free biscuit is better for you than the normal one or, or <laughs> oh hi, or watching videos about AI cats mountain climbing. This is the hidden reason that you can't lose that stubborn belly fat. No matter how cleanly you eat, no matter how many sad little salads you choke down, it's also behind the brain fog that makes you forget your own kids' names, the blood pressure pills you never wanted, and the creeping weight gain that seem, feels somewhat unstoppable. And here's the really terrifying bit, if I haven't terrified you enough already. By the time your family doctor finally raises an eyebrow, it's usually been building for 10, 20, maybe even 30 years. My own diet was so filled with blood sugar spiking junk foods for so long, for my whole life, and I thought I was the healthy one, that I'm really surprised I didn't already have full-blown diabetes. Most regular GPs, MDs, won't bat an eye unless your fasting sugars are above 100 milligrams per deciliter. That's their red line. But many scientists say that waiting that long is just, it's too late. Um, Dr. Kate Shanahan warns us that regularly running above 89 milligrams per deciliter is when you should start really paying attention and getting serious because by the time you hit 100, type 2 diabetes and other serious metabolic damage may already be lurking. That's right, you've basically been rotting from the inside out and nobody told you or even noticed. But don't panic. Well, just panic a little bit. But stick around because I'm going to show you the fastest, most powerful way to reverse this because before it takes you down. And I'm going to show you some simple, easy to understand strategies so you can walk away from watching this video with a plan. Mikey, it's just a statue. Look, go and have a look at it. Come on, sick. How is it? It's a very weird statue, I do agree. Come on, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> no, don't do that to him. I'm taking a film. <laughs> Who's that? Who that? Who that? Look, come and see. Come and see. Look, come and see. Come and see. <laughs> I agree, Mikey. It is super weird. <laughs> but he's not happy. He never growls. That's really funny. Mikey, who's this? Come and see. He says, no, nothing to see here. <laughs> it's in Andorra with uh, Oscar, who's looking for mushrooms. Got one. Have you? What have you got? Ink cap, shaggy ink cap. Oh, cool. Is that someone we can eat without dying? Yeah. I hope he's right. <laughs> I've got the app. So he tells me he has an app and then we aren't going to die when we eat these mushrooms. Yeah, so if you don't get any more videos after this one, you'll know that that app wasn't really to be trusted. So chapter one, the hidden epidemic. Here's the truth. Eight out of ten adults have already have some degree of insulin resistance. You heard that right. Eight out of ten, like eight out of ten cats say, or eight out of ten owners say their cats prefer whiskers. Do you remember that strap line from the advert and from the 80s? And that's not me being dramatic, that's, that's real data. And yet almost nobody is talking about it. It's the, oh, wherever I go in Andorra, there's somebody using some power tools to make a lot of noise in the back of my video. No one is talking about it. It's an epidemic hiding in plain sight. Doc family doctors don't routinely test you for it. They have to be nicely persuaded and Instead, they wait until you've got full-blown type 2 diabetes. That's like ignoring the smoke until your entire kitchen is on fire. So what does it actually look like? What does, what does insulin resistance actually look like? How does, it, how does it manifest? How are you supposed to know if you've got it? Here's the really cruel bit. You can look slim and still be insulin resistant. On the outside, Instagram ready. And yet on the inside, a metabolic dumpster fire. And it's happening in younger and younger people, even in children, as the industrially created diet that people eat is thought of as normal. But it's not, it's absolutely dire. And it's so far from 
the diet that, that humans evolved eating, which was a diet of real food. Pretty. We're above Ordino, in case you're interested. So chapter two, what insulin is supposed to do? So quick biology class, the kind that actually matters. Insulin is like your body's traffic warden. Its job is to direct sugar from your blood into your muscles and into your liver. Job done, that's it. However, However, when your cells stop responding, when your cells stop listening, insulin has to shout louder and louder and the body will pump out more and more of it, but nobody's obeying the whistle. And that's when the damage really starts stacking up. So high insulin pushes up fat storage, blocks fat burning, messes with your arteries and fuels cravings. It's like hiring a babysitter who teaches your kids how to shoplift. Think about it. If you're constantly craving snacks, and then it's not just, oh, I really like food, it's your hormones absolutely screaming at you that they're broken. It's a giant red flag. We should be able to eat breakfast and then not think about food again for five or six hours. That's the normal healthy response of a metabolically stable human. All this snacking that we've been led to believe is just keeping our metabolism kick ticking over. No, we aren't goats. We are not meant to nibble all day long. <laughs> Chapter three, the scary consequences. So what happens if you just ignore insulin resistance? I mean, just pretend it's not happening. Just pretend it isn't there and, and just get on with your life. What about if you're just one of those people who says, oh, I'm okay with just being a bit fat. It doesn't worry me or a little of what you fancy. I'm happy. Here are your risks. First of all, you are going to end up with a fatty liver. Your triglycerides are going to climb. Your blood pressure is going to rise. Your blood vessels will inflame and stiffen like an old garden hose that's been left outside all winter. And your brain, insulin resistance there is now called type 3 diabetes. Translation, dementia, which isn't very nice. Cancer loves sugar. Insulin helps those tumours to grow. Congratulations, you've built them the perfect Airbnb. And the even bigger one, heart disease, still the world's ah. number one killer, still directly related to, you guessed it, insulin resistance. But sure, keep worrying about whether red meat is the problem. It's like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic when the iceberg has already punched a great big hole in your hull. Chapter four, so how do you know if you've got it? So you might be wondering, okay, so how do I know if I've got this insulin resistance then? Here's your checklist. You're tired after meals, you're constantly snacking, you're, you've got belly fat that just will not budge no matter what you do, your blood pressure's creeping up or it's already high, your blood tests show high triglycerides or low HDL, your waist is bigger than half your height, so you have to measure to see if that's the case. Um, you maybe have patches of dark velvety skin around the neck, the armpits, 
um, it looks like dirt that just won't wash off, but it's actually insulin shouting at you. Skin tags, um, those little dangly bits of skin that just pop up uninvited. Um, cute, no, harmless, well, yeah, not really because they're linked to high insulin. If you tick two or more of those boxes, congratulations, you are officially insulin resistant. And there are other markers as well, but you don't get a medal. You just have a shorter life expectancy and potentially years ahead of pain and misery and potentially an even shorter belt. Chapter five, the good news. So, all right, enough doom and gloom. I've, I've worried you enough. If you're still even listening, let's talk lifeline. Step one, stop pouring petrol on the fire. That means cutting the sugar, the bread, the pasta, the rice, the cereals, the juice, all the usual suspects. Yes, even the whole grain ones. Your body doesn't care about the marketing spin. They all turn into sugar in the body. Step two, eat like a grown-up. That means protein and healthy fats. Meat, fish, eggs, butter, olive oil, avocado, you know, actual food, not Pop-Tarts and ready meals. Step three, stop grazing all day. You are not a cow. Every time you eat, you spike your insulin. So you'll give your body a break. Try fasting or at least stick to just eating at meal times instead of just snacking all the time or eating and snacking all day long. Constant snacks. Get really, really hungry. Food tastes amazing when you actually leave a proper gap between your meals. So you eat your breakfast and then you eat nothing else. Five or six hours later, you're probably hungry again. Great, it's lunchtime. Step four, move your body. Muscle is the best insulin sponge that you have. Even a brisk walk after dinner makes a difference. No excuses. Step five, sleep and stress. If you're surviving on four hours a night and bathing in cortisol, guess what? Your insulin is not going to behave. Sleep isn't optional, it's medicine. And if yours isn't very good, then you really, really need to work on it. So that's the scary truth. Insulin resistance is the silent killer behind that stubborn fat, that fatigue and disease and ignore it and you're marching towards diabetes, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, all kinds of horrible stuff that you don't even want to be contemplating. But face it head on and you can actually reverse the damage. You're going to have more energy, sharper thinking, and yes, that stubborn belly fat will finally start to shift. So the scary truth is it's up to you. So what's it going to be? Another so-called healthy cereal bar or finally taking back control of your future? If you've enjoyed this video and you're ready to go deeper, check out my self-guided course, Maximum Fat Loss. It walks you through all the steps you need to reverse insulin resistance and get your health back on track. And if you know you do better with accountability, I also offer one-to-one -one coaching. That's the full hand-holding, cheerleading, sometimes tough love approach to make sure you actually follow through with all the steps and completely transform yourself. All the details on my website, go take a look, your future self will definitely thank you. And in the meantime, from a gloriously sunny day at the top of the mountains in Andorra, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might like one of these two next. And meanwhile, from Oscar with the drone, Mikey the dog and me, cheerio. Bye for now. Hope to see you next time.